Hey again, it's uh, Brian Fields. Uh, I'm working on a little project here at my house. I've been under the weather, still am under the weather, and uh, kind of slept all day today. Um, but uh, got up, had something to do. This came in the uh, UPS for me, so I said, let me, uh, let me make a little quick video on it, because it looked to be kind of nicely made. And uh, this is something, as I've been doing some generator stuff at my house here, um, I determined one of the problems I have, I, I have a generator that can do about 32 amps um, on a single generator. In parallel, they can do um, <clears throat> just about 65 to 70 amps. Uh, they can certainly surge more than that for starting, um, but not much. Um, so uh, one of them can actually run my AC unit, my big AC unit in my house. I have some other smaller AC units that are mini split uh, variable frequency drive type units that uh, don't have this issue. But my big unit, which is a, it's a three ton uh, conventional cool uh, with a start or a run capacitor, um, start capacitor. <clears throat> and uh, that unit is, uh, it is stupid for lack of a better term. Uh, it gets a 24 volt relay to close and it kicks on and the compressor starts on. Uh, there's no electrical control boards, nothing like that. I didn't want anything outside that could blow up in the unit. Uh, it's strictly cool, so there's no reversing valves, nothing like that. Um, I have enough other auxiliary heat in my house uh, that for the couple days a year I'm going to need heat. I'm not going to use a heat pump. So uh, one of the problems that happens with a AC motor, though, is when you're trying to start it, it has a essentially almost a zero impedance. Uh, it's... Uh, almost like a direct short until it gets running. And uh, I could go into the whole theory of that. It would be a lot of fun for me, probably wouldn't be a lot of fun for you guys. Tons of other videos out there about that. So one of the ways to mitigate this is to use something that rather than shocking the motor with, uh, uh, you know, 240 right on it, it'll, it'll ramp that voltage up very nicely. And that's kind of what this device does. And this does a little more intelligently than some of the other ones that are out there. Um, now, obviously, the other way to solve this is get an AC unit with a variable frequency drive, which if you have an inverter powered mini split or something like that, one of the Mitsubishis, you already have that. This is useless for it. Um, you don't need this. But uh, this came, uh, this is a company called uh, Micro Air. It comes with uh, some fairly decent documentation. Um, you know, as of everything, you just scan it and download whatever you need. Um, that's their uh, their sheet there, and it wasn't terribly expensive. It was a few hundred dollars. Uh, so, yeah, I think by the time I got it shipped, I was probably about 350 into it, uh, which, admittedly, could be a, quite a bit. But this is going to let me start my AC unit on a single generator, um, which is important for me. Um, and it seems to be highly, uh, a, a lot nicer made than some of the inverter boards that I've seen for the higher efficiency AC units that aren't mini splits. So, um, and it's got a Bluetooth monitoring module in it, so you can hook up to your phone, you can play with it, um, <clears throat> which uh, seems to be something that's going to be a lot of fun for me. But uh, all you do is you essentially mount this uh, case here. Let me zoom out here for a second. There you go. Mount this guy. Um, and this is, I forget who makes this case. It's a pretty standard case. Um, <clears throat> mount this on the outside of your AC unit. And then you just have these wires coming in. Essentially goes in series to your compressor and uh, ramps the voltage on it. So let me, uh, let me open this thing up here. I am curious how well this is going to hold up in the sun, being it's clear, but we'll see. I'm going to, I mean, it's going to be on the back of the AC unit, so it won't be like, whoops, <clears throat> so it won't be in the immediate sun, but it's still Florida and our sun is, is pretty bad. off 
we'll set this over here so the screws don't fall out. Let's take a look at what we got in here. So we got ourselves a nice big capacitor. Um, and if we zoom in down here, I'm filming this on my phone, I'm sorry guys. Uh, so that's the little Bluetooth module right down there if we look. There it is. It's interesting, this doesn't have an FCC ID on it, but it's definitely got a Bluetooth module soldered into it, so. Um, so let's see, yeah, so that's the big capacitor. A um, <coughs> couple relays over here, and then uh, probably shouldn't be poking around here with something metal. Um, I'd say these are the, definitely the variable frequency drive components here. Uh, the SCRs or IGBTs or whatever they are, you know, silicon switches. Um, some other ones over there. This looks like it's a uh, power supply for the rest of the unit, for the, the brain parts of it. Um, and what's interesting here, let me zoom in again. You can see the, um, let's see here. Focus, uh, this is actually soldered in. The fuse is actually soldered in, which is kind of interesting. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this guy out of here. Let me see if I can. <clears throat> Pop a few of these. Okay. Okay, so that comes out of there pretty easily. <coughs> um, and it's just a standard cap, so it looks like it's pretty easy to fix. It uh, it's a newly manufactured one, though. Let's see. It's newly manufactured, so uh, probably should be good for a long time. It's a higher quality one than I'm used to seeing, too. So, um, but let's see. Let me get in here. So, it looks like we got an ant mill down here, actually. What is that? That's an ant mill. On uh, focus. Uh, I can't see what it is here. Hold on. <coughs> uh, it is conformally coated, so that is kind of nice. Yeah, it's a Mega 256, actually. Let's see if this is... Let's see it a little bit easier here. Yeah. So, it could be... Could be an Arduino, but probably not. It's... Probably just uh, somebody developed it on that, looking at it. And uh, it's another, like a little test connector right there. So I'm guessing, based on everything, because keep in mind this is going to be powered off 240 volts. So yeah, if there's a power LED there, let me zoom this out. Sorry, guys. Okay, so yeah, if there's a power LED right there, this is all going to be... So here's your power coming in and ground. Yeah, so this is gonna be getting from 240 volts AC down to what we can run the microprocessor and stuff on. And that's gonna control through some optocouplers, the SCRs that are gonna go, yeah, there's your output, right? <coughs> Excuse me, there's your output to your uh, motor right there, or compressor right there, um, and then run uh, start cap uh, is there as well so it's got that anyways it looks to be like a pretty nice board um, I don't know if I should take the entire board out or not I probably could Let's see if I can get a uh, get these to come off oh yeah they come off pretty easily okay so white black oh they're labeled too so I don't even have to remember them Okay. <coughs> 
There we go. Popped all those off. And it looks like it's just held in by, I guess, four screws. Now, what's interesting is this little black piece is definitely added after they put this in. Because there's no way to get this past that. And uh, anyways, looking here, these are the, I guess, two relays. Um, yeah, K1, K2 uh, for turning it on, turning it off. And anyways, uh, I'm going to put it in. I'm, I'm happy to see it's conformally coated and actually looks like a really nicely made PCB. Um, I don't know if this is, uh, you know, it might be. I think it might actually be factory conformal coat. Um, sometimes, you know, I didn't know if this is a small production run or not. I'm assuming it is just based on the size of the company. Sometimes they'll just conformal coat this stuff themselves um, or possibly do that after the fact. Um, but no, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, the conformal coating, it's, it's kind of thin, but it's over everything, which is really important because a lot of AC units here, uh, even in the reversing boards, they don't use conformal coating on them. Uh, and I, I can tell the number of times I've come upon an AC unit where a little lizard or a snake or a squirrel has crawled up back behind it. And there's nothing to stop the, the unit from, you know, shorting out because the conformal coating isn't there. Um, and they'll, I mean, these things are built just very, very cheaply. So I don't think this is such a bad investment. And, uh, I'll see how it's going to work when I get it uh, get it hooked up. I'll try to get some higher resolution pictures and post them on my wiki when uh, I have a little bit more time. But anyways, that's the uh, Easy Start Micro Air Easy Start, and uh, I'm hoping this is going to do what I need it to do. Uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, um, and uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to reach out. This is uh, Brian Fields, Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9CR.